So, you want to eat out in Wellington. Luckily for you, this city packs quite the punch. Did you know Wellington has more cafes per capita than London or New York? It is considered the craft brew capital of New Zealand, the coffee capital of New Zealand, and to some Wellingtonians, even the culinary capital of New Zealand. So either these Wellingtonians are too busy being double parked on a caffeine on one hand and alcohol on the other, or they're actually onto something. We spent five days here eating out at all the good places. So here are our top 10 things to eat in Wellington. Starting off our list, it's probably a crime to start your day without a coffee in the coffee capital of New Zealand, right? The video title did say 10 places, but I didn't say I was an honest man either. So as a little bonus, here are three cool coffee spots to start any day hitting the ground running. If you're looking for a classic coffee spot, then Lamison's Brew Bar is your friend. They've got the classic drinks, deconstructed coffees, and even interesting siphon brews. Also, their toasties and scones are great if you want a little something to the side. However, if you're feeling real hip and modern, then visit the very cool Evil Twins on Willis Street. Yes, they are in fact run by twins if you were wondering. Their specialty here is their delicious jar drinks. We got their tasty matcha and triple shot latte, but they also have your classic hot coffee drinks too. Finally, if you're not in a rush or just want something real gram-worthy, then Pour and Twist is the spot. You won't find an espresso machine here as all their coffee is actually manually brewed. What we came here for are their very aesthetically pleasing but most importantly, very delicious specialty drinks. I mean, you cannot tell me that these drinks don't spark some childlike fascination out of you. Now you gotta start your mornings at the iconic Lee Street Bakery. They've got everything from pies, toasties, and baked goods. But of course, they've got some great coffee as well to start your day. Lead Street is also very famous for their salted caramel cookie, so you can't leave without getting one. Their lamb sausage roll is great, but their almond croissant is even more amazing. i definitely feel a hundred times better about life if I started my day with that. Now if you're looking for a very solid brunch, look no further than Olive on Cuba Street with their, with their very nice outdoor garden area. I ain't much of a brunchin' man myself, but Olive definitely took me one step closer to being a convert. Of course, Wellington is home to the most incredible cafes in New Zealand, so brunching is mandatory here. The food and drinks at Olive were so great that I might sacrifice sleeping until noon on weekends just to brunch here again. Malaysian food is some of our favorite food ever, and Little Penang might just be serving some of the best in the whole of New Zealand. It's a legendary Wellington spot that's expanded to three locations, but a few locals have informed us that the branch in the terrace is the best. I can't verify that information myself, but you know, why take the chance? Their mee goreng was so flavorful and out of this world that my dish of the nasi tokma just really blessed my taste buds with its most incredible spices and flavor. Finish your meal off with some sweet kue lapis and srimuka, then you're good to go. This was actually our first meal after arriving in Wellington and we're so thankful for the gorgeous sandwiches at Romeo's for granting us an excellent start to the trip. I started off my day with a classic bacon, egg, and cheese to fit the breakfast mood while Aliana opted for the chonky falafel sandwich full of fresh herbs and veggies. As a bonus, we washed those sammies down with some very refreshing cold brew coffees with salted vanilla cold foam. Another spot that you need to eat at in Wellington is the legendary KC Cafe. With a menu this big, I'm not sure if you're going to be spending more time deciding or even eating all their delicious food. We started off with some simple wontons, but the mains were just absolute comfort food. The dry noodles with duck was straight from noodle heaven, and the eggplant, pork, and salted fish clay pot was just one of those dishes that make life so beautiful. Also, did you know that this spot has a dedicated Instagram account solely for reviewing all the items on their menu? If that doesn't certify a spot as legendary, then I don't know what does. Okay, I might have a slight bias due to my fondness for historic establishments, but I am willing to risk life and limb to say that it is a Wellington essential to pay your respects at the Green Parrot, the oldest restaurant in Wellington. 
They first opened in 1926 and the menu has stayed pretty much the same since the 1930s, but I can confirm that the comfort and rustic beauty of these simple but massive plates hasn't worn off. Aliana's battered and fried scallops were simple yet comforting, while my massive mixed grill shocked us both at the sheer amount of meat in front of us. Also, shout out to the free white bread and butter. What a throwback, what a meal. Now, our meal at Ciccio Caccio in Newtown was some of the best Italian food we've ever had. I absolutely adore the vintage and rustic vibe of this place, and it really made me feel like I was back in Italy. The Bigoli pasta had me going on a big Italian nostalgia trip, while the Strozza Preti pasta was equally as divine. Our other dishes of saltimbocca alla romana and an octopus and potato salad were both cherries on top to what was one of our favorite meals of the trip. Don't forget to wash your meal down with some of their house wine, and of course mop up any residual oils with their free bread. So if you're looking for some high quality seafood, then look no further than Ortega's, an iconic Wellington institution. Ortega is more on the upscale end, although they take pride in serving some of the freshest, highest quality seafood in Wellington. This was by far our most expensive meal of the trip, but I mean, every trip has gotta have a treat yourself meal, right? Our starters of buttery snapper French toast, creamy prawn tagliatelle, and their signature tuna ceviche were all excellent. The seared moki was a beautiful piece of fish, while the lobster was a showstopper and a half. Now you know why this is our most expensive meal. They even do great desserts here as exemplified by their luxurious Catalan crepe and perfectly balanced chocolate mousse. And on to the dessert, if you're looking for uh, the most decadent brownies in Wellington, look no further than Lashings in Hannah's Laneway. It's a cute second level store with a nice view of the streets below. We got their classic milk chocolate brownie and s'mores brownie, and both were just divine. They also do other sweets and savories if you're needing to supplement their brownies. Lashings is definitely a great place for any time of the day for some excellent dessert. Oh, you know what? Fine. I already lied about this list having 10 places, so here's another bonus spot right next to Lashings, the Fix and Fog window. They're one of the most famous kiwi peanut butter brands and they do the fattest peanut butter toasts from one of the cutest hole in the walls ever. Have it for breakfast or dessert, doesn't really matter, it's gonna be good either way. Well, that does it for our top 10 spots here in Wellington. Obviously, we could not include every spot. You should have, you should have seen the spreadsheet I made for this trip. There's so many great places that I missed out, and this just so happens to be the spots that we hit up. Obviously, we are not from Wellington, so this was just merely our experience, and nothing can quite beat the advice of a local, and also just walking around the city. It is a very walkable city, so I'm sure you'll be able to find a lot of great spots that way. Anyway, friends, I wish you happy eating many, many cups of uh, caffeine not too much beer don't 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 get too wasted friends and i really hope that you found this wellington guide useful and uh, enjoy your stay in this magnificent city